Hi guys, oh, welcome back to this video. I am gonna do a quick little pregnancy update. Just put Callie down for a nap. I've been in like full blown nesting mode, getting stuff done, and so this is my daily look here. I'm actually in the new baby's room, which I've gotten the nursery about halfway done, so I will have to do a full blown reveal here soon, but I think you guys are gonna like it. Anyways, I wanna do a pregnancy update because a lot has happened in the past gosh when did i do my last update it, it's probably been a good four weeks at least probably more five weeks i don't know i just keep like things keep like happening and then i just am like okay I'm, i'll update after this appointment or update after this appointment i just just need to update you guys so um i am 25 weeks three days today um, so this will be, I don't even remember when my last video was, honestly. Um, but I'm gonna update you guys over the last couple weeks because a lot has happened. Um, to start off with, I had my anatomy scan. I think that's where I, last video I said, oh, I'm gonna have my anatomy scan. I had my anatomy scan at like 19-ish weeks. And, um, they found that the baby had a choroid plexus cyst on the brain, which I'm gonna explain it the best way that I was kind of told, but obviously, you know, you can always look it up. But essentially, it's a little fluid collection on the brainstem area where like spinal fluid's made, and it appears to look like a cyst, but it's not technically a cyst, it just looks like a cyst. And um, my OB said they resolve like 100% of the time, they're not associated with like having like brain damage or any of that. Um, he says, but it is something that we have to follow up on in like a couple weeks. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, um, does that mean like is this associated with like Down syndrome or any like chromosomal abnormalities? And he said, yes, it can be. It's a soft marker for like Down syndrome and things if it's associated with another major anomaly, like a heart defect or something, which the baby didn't show any of those things. So he's like, if you wanna do genetic testing to ease your mind, we can do that. And I said, let's just go ahead and do it because I just would like to kind of have that complete reassurance um, that, you know, this baby's healthy and whatnot. So I did end up getting the N NIPT. It's like the non-invasive prenatal or pregnancy test. I don't know. They draw your blood and it checks for like a bunch of different other trisomies and that came back. Everything was very normal, extremely low risk. So um, the chances of this baby having anything wrong at this point is, is uh, they're, they're gonna be fine. So that was relieving. Um, and then fast forward to about 23 weeks and a couple days, I had a, another anatomy scan and a fetal echo because I have a VSD. And so anytime the mom has a heart problem, then they just want to check on the baby make sure they don't have anything which fortunately my vsd never caused me any issues it never closed up um it's it's literally never affected anything in my entire life i never had surgery on it it's so small that it was supposed to close up and it just never did so it's just it's there um not even something i think about at all <laughs> ever but um because i have that they wanted to do a fetal echo on the baby they did one with callie and so i was familiar with this process and in order to do this you go to a high risk ob um, that specializes in doing those fetal echoes so at like 23 weeks four days i went and got a fetal echo done of the baby and the heart came back 100 percent perfect the anatomy scan they did came back oh, <laughs> 100% perfect as far as the baby goes. The little cyst had resolved, like baby was looking fantastic. However, they discovered that my cervix was shortening and starting to like funnel down. So essentially like your cervix should be closed all the way and long and mine was like shorter than what it should be, but also kind of like open on the top like this. And um so they were doing it like anatomy scan like on my abdomen and the nurse or the tech that was doing it was like you know what i just want to do like a transvaginal ultrasound to check your cervix because it looks a little weird and i was kind of like okay it's gonna be fine <laughs> like it's probably just double checking it um so she did it and she's like ah yeah you're measuring shorter you have this funneling let's have you talk with the doctor so this scan that i was getting was literally supposed to just be a scan i wasn't supposed to talk with the high risk ob at all um but because of this finding they had me like immediately talk with the high risk ob doctor there 
So I talked with him and essentially he said that the yes, my cervix is short. It's, it was measuring like 2.2 to 2.8 centimeters. So they kind of averaged it and said it was about 2.5 centimeters. And that that's like at the very bottom of what they would want it at. Ideally, they want to see it like four centimeters. 2.5 is like the basically like the zero percentile <laughs> essentially of what they want your um, cervix to be measuring. And because I had this funneling, it was kind of showing that like maybe I was starting to like not dilate, like I was still closed at the, like my cervix was still closed, but like I was starting to show signs of like it opening up too early. And granted at this time, I was only like 23 weeks, four days. So not even considered viable. And they were just a little concerned about it getting worse. And so um, at that appointment, he gave me a ton of information. It was, he was very nice and like a lot of statistics and a lot of things. And it was very overwhelming just to have this like sudden change. Um, but he said, you know, you can continue to work. Um, and whatnot and I was like right now it, for those of you who don't know I'm a I'm an ICU nurse and COVID is exploding in the state of Arizona and my job has been like very 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 physical and hard and at this scan the three days prior I had worked and so like I hadn't been drinking enough water I had been having like a ton of Braxton Hicks and just like on my feet for 12 plus hours, walking eight plus miles a shift, lifting patients that are like 400 plus pounds. And I, my body was just like, it was so tired. And so I told the, o the OB, I said, I'm not one to try and get out of work. I want to work this entire pregnancy if it's safe, but can I do light duty? Because my job is so physical right now. This was not what I was doing. Like four or five months ago like prior to me getting pregnant and i'm like exhausted by the end of my shifts and he said yes that's fine you can do light duty for now um so that's what i've been doing which has been like so needed more so than like i even realized um but my job's just been so so physical and i and very mentally draining and emotionally draining and i didn't quite realize how much it was affecting me until like i kind of stopped doing like a bedside nursing role. And so right now I'm just like a, a unit secretary on the unit that I, I work on. Um, so I'm just doing paperwork and, and <laughs> a bunch of stuff on a computer, which is boring, but it's like mentally and physically what I needed. The OB had asked me like, are you having a bunch of contractions or pressure, like pelvic pressure? And I was like, well, yeah, I'm having a ton of Braxton Hicks and I feel a lot of pressure after I work my shifts, but I kind of attributed it to like, I hadn't drank enough water, I'd been on my feet all day. And he was like, you know, basically like I could have been like really putting a lot of stress on my body, which I know hands down that I was. Looking back, I was way overdoing it um, and not listening to those signs. I would get home from my shifts and have so many Braxton Hicks. It wasn't until I like took that variable out and drank a ton of water and was resting and whatnot that I actually like started to realize, oh, I'm not having that many Braxton Hicks. Like literally I was having so many just thinking, oh, it's second pregnancy. I'm just recognizing this sooner. No, <laughs> I was definitely overdoing it, so. Anyways, I followed up with this OB a week later to kind of to remeasure my cervix and see if things had gotten worse. And he's and we did the measurements and I was at like 2.66 to 3 centimeters. So it actually was slightly better, still on the shorter side. Um, still had that funneling, but the OB said it's not going to get better, essentially. Like I'm still going to have the funneling. Um, we just don't want it to get worse. So now I'm gonna be following up every two weeks, at least at this point, to do these cervical measurements. Um, I called my own OB like a week ago because I just like, after that initial appointment, I was like so emotional and overwhelmed and stressed about, oh my gosh, having a preterm like delivery and a premature baby and like, what if I have to go on bed rest? And I was like grieving the fact that are, are Callie and I gonna even be able to do any things? Like I was planning on going to the zoo with her and like we're very active, we go to the parks, we go on walks and now is that like just gonna be over with until like this next baby's born? So I was kind of grieving the fact that like we may not have our normal 
time together for the rest of this pregnancy. It's going to be very different and modified and stressing about how that's going to affect her and how it's going to affect me and if I can't work and there's just so many things I was thinking about of like how, what it would look like if I w had a preterm delivery, um, if I had to go on bed rest and was out of work and just yeah it was very overwhelming so I had a couple days where I just was like a mess and so I actually called my OB to like ask some further questions and essentially the OB said you can continue with your normal life in the sense of you can do laundry you can go get the mail but don't be like going on a hike or doing anything that's super strenuous like a p90x workout and so they were fine with me continuing light duty for now unfortunately fortunately unfortunately i can only do light duty per my work for eight weeks and so that gets me to about 33 weeks and so from there on i'll have to kind of figure it out but i'm hoping at that point things are a little bit better at work i'm also further in my pregnancy that if something did happen i would at least be in a safer range for delivering the baby versus 23 weeks um and so so yeah anyways <laughs> I know that's like a lot of information. Essentially next week I have another um, cervical measurement and then I also have my glucose test next week and whatnot. But I've been feeling so much better. I've just been doing kind of my normal stuff here without like trying to push it too much. I've been drinking over a gallon of water a day. I'll have to link the water bottle I bought because it's ridiculous. It's a gallon sized water bottle, but it's really helped keep me accountable. Um, the baby's heart rate, I think, was like 146 at my end, the last anatomy scan, like the 23 week one. Um, and they were one pound 11 ounces, like estimated. And then at my 19 week one, they're 14 ounces. So growing, doing great. I feel a ton of kicks. I feel a ton of movement. I overall feel like pretty good. I just feel like I'm growing. I've noticed that I kind of got this like little bit of pregnancy not gonna say swelling but chub in my face um, I'm not like swelling like my hands and ankles and all that they're like not swollen so I'm not worried about the swelling just kind of normal fluid retention and yeah I feel good I'm not nauseous I don't have heartburn like I, my blood pressure's been good and and everything so I just have to really take it easy and be smart and I am one to definitely overdo things and be like oh it'll be fine I'll just push it a little more a little more and I'm trying my best to kind of take a step back and let people help where I can get help and whatnot so <sighs> anyways let me show you guys my belly and um yeah I will see you in my next video bye